Hello everyone! With patch 7.2, we may have Shadow Song on the Broken Shore, who informs us that we need to rally a new champion to bolster our ranks. At Light Hope Chapel, Paladins are informed by Liadrin that our ongoing offensive within the Broken Shore it has drawn the interest of many Paladins who now wish to fight under our leadership. Some are more worthy than others, but only we can be the judge of that, as we go out to use the High Lord's judgement to determine the worth of these Silver Hand recruits. Some are accepted in, some are simply declined, and some of them are actually a Dreadlord in disguise. We will not be stopped. Dallas believes that our judgement is firm and fair, but she wonders about her own worthiness. If it would be tested, would it be found lacking? You see, she has found her family sigil amongst the demonic runes she's been deciphering. Why the Moonfang Crest would be known to the Legion is a mystery to her, but she trusts that we'll be able to find what connection lies between her ancestors and her enemies. What's left of their village can be found within Valshara, so we head out to Shadowfen to recover relics from her past. In the village, we find Adeline Moonfang, who tells us that a demon is the final of death in the ruins nearby. She can deal with both the harpies and this demon, so if we help her out with taking care of Darkbinder Elisov, she will grant us access to whatever's left of the Moonfang family relics. These spirits belong to the Burning Legion! My death will not break the pact! <laughs> As promised, she hands over the crescent key that will open up her family's lockboxes. Within, we find a blank scroll with a small crescent moon symbol on it, a fellstone pendant, and we find Neris's journal. They may never forgive me for what I have done, but at least they will be safe. For now, my family will be safe. The weight of my decision weighs heavy on my heart, but each day I see their carefree smiles eases that burden. Just a little. My gift to them is the bliss of ignorance. They will not realize its price until it is too late. What is done is done. I hope I have made the right choice. Dallas knows of the name Neris. He is a distant relative, but why would he hold on to fell trinkets? The answer might be found within the blank scroll, which her trained eyes can spot hidden runes on, and as with most demonic runes, it will need fell blood to undo the magic that been used to conceal whatever message is within the scroll. We go out to collect 10 fell blood from demons throughout the Broken Isles, and upon returning, Dallas' mouse drops after reading the scroll. The runes detail a pact between the Burning Legion and her ancestors, a dark deal that will grant her ancestors protection protections from demons in life, but in return, their spirits will belong to the Legion. The fell pendant that we found, that is an embodiment of the pact and it cannot be removed once worn. Now with the power of our artifact, we should be able to destroy this cursed piece of jewelry. At last I am free. Neris? Explain yourself, uncle. You must understand, I was trying to protect our family. But in the end... The pact I made cursed our ancestors with a fate worse than death. Their spirits are bound to the Legion, forced to do the demon's bidding. This... this is your doing? How could you? I am so sorry, Delis. I know it is too much to ask for your forgiveness, but I must ask for your help. Neris wants her aid in getting out of the bargain he had made with the Dreadlord Zorak. We're strong enough to destroy the fell pendants, and with that power, we should be able to end the curse that plagues their ancestors and set their spirits free. Within the Crescent Ruins, we go about freeing the Fellbound spirits, while also taking care of Oathbinder Zorak, which Neris said was a Dreadlord, but to me it seems to be an Eredar. It could be that I killed him too fast, so that he wasn't able to transform into his true form. You will succumb to the Burning Legion. This I vow. Those bounties cannot be. With Zorak dead, their ancestor spirits can finally be free of their curse. Nerus knows that he has much to answer for, and he liked to follow Dallas her lead by lending his aid to the Order. Another Knight of Paladin joined the fight against the Legion. I know I have much to answer for. Indeed you do, uncle. But this is a start, I suppose. Now there is actually a second follower that joins the paladins, or rather, he allows the paladins to join him. This is Maximilian of Northshire, who sends us a letter to seek him out. 
Bats. Squire of Azeroth, I write to you in a darkest hour from the depths of Unguro Crater. I have returned. My fleet has made landfall on the beaches of the Broken Isles. I am prepared to pierce the Legion's lines like a sharp pointy lens and drive them back to the nether that spawned them. I await you at our fortifications. We look upon some very high mountains. Make haste! Signed, Maximilian of Northshire, Knight Errant. We find Maximilian at Rockaway Shallows in High Mountain, where his fleet turns out to be a single ship and he's quite naked, holding only a stick. Welcome, weary traveler. Come sit by my roaring fire. Never fear, I have secured a position on the beachhead and will soon thwart the Legion assault on these lands. Hello again, Maximilian. Squire, is that you? I barely recognize you. You have not aged well. Never mind. I suppose even those of your advanced years must continue their training. Training? Indeed, Squire. As you can see, I've assaulted this shore and have secured the beats against the Legion. But there is much more work to do. They attempted to break through my defense last eve, but I held the line stoically against the assaults. You can see the demonic corpses over yonder, though you may not possess the stomach to look upon them very long. I see two dead crabs. Is that what you mean? Ha ha ha! Crabs, you say? Your ignorance on these matters of demons is presenting itself readily. We must continue your training post haste, lest you fall forever into a pit of ignorance. Ah, <sighs> very well. To begin our training, we must first kneel down for the glorious Maximilian, and afterwards we get to help him out. The journey here was perilous. It was fraught with danger, storms, demons, storm demons. He shudders at the memory. Of course, he overcame such dangers at great loss to his person. This is where he needs our assistance. We must venture forth, nay, sally forth, and recover his armor, his weapon, and of course his grand steed. Once we successfully completed these task free, we will be promoted to Squire First Class. Amongst the legions of demons, which to the untrained eye might seem like simple murlocs, we find Maximilian's Helm of Greatness, the Spalders of Hugeness, the Pants of Wonderment, the Boots of Kicking, and the Gauntlets of Huge Grasping. His horse Pimento was stolen by a powerful demon who has captured her, riding her like she was his own. We find the steed in great peril, save it from the powerful demonic beast that has taken it, and we send it back to camp. Finally, there's the matter of Excalibur also stolen, and we must retrieve this powerful artifact, which is not really an artifact weapon at all, as a squire is supposed to. Upon returning to camp, Maximilian strikes a powerful pose as he claims his artifact once more, which apparently comes with a shield, and he does a little dance as he puts on his armor. Now that we've secured his belongings, we're ready for the real quest, since he did not journey here simply to thwart the demon invasion. Oh no, he came here in search of his beloved, his loved Deloria. Whilst resting between slaying of dragons, he had a dream, almost a vision. It told him Deloria had been kidnapped and taken to the floating city in the sky. It must be Dalaran, so we quickly mount up and we meet Maximilian at the Letter Domain Lounge, where his beloved Deloria is actually waiting. She wonders how he found her again so fast, and between just us, old Max here has no chance with her, but his heart is in the right place. She keeps trying to run away and hide from him, but he always keeps finding her. She doesn't have it in her to upset him with the truth, so she has an idea. Why don't we go out and kill some of those really big two-headed hill bandits for her? Let's say they stole some jewelry and we can use it to buy our freedom. Never fear, my love. We will hunt down those bandits and secure your freedom. Come, squire. I shall meet you in the mountains that are high, Maximilian says. As together, we take on a mighty hill Etten. We reclaim the stolen jewelry, which looks more like teeth, and we return to buy Deloria's freedom. Except, Deloria is nowhere to be found. Indeed, there's Dolores, a troll, not a goblin, and certainly not Deloria. Dolores hasn't seen Deloria for a few days, and she's not sure who we're talking about. Oh, what poor fate. Here we are, with the jewelry to buy his beloved's freedom, and she has simply disappeared. Despite searching around the inn and asking the people if they've seen her, there's simply no trace of Deloria. She's nowhere to be found, she must have been taken once more, but we shall never rest. Maximilian invites us to join him as a follower, lead his troops and perform missions for him. Together, we will find her. Two powerful allies recruited to our cause, and we have bolstered our strength against the Legion once more. That is how Paladins obtain the new champion, which means they've reached the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching everyone, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!